Right. So you probably got a warning, I think, that it's recording, have you? Yeah, I've just clicked past the warning. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for uh, giving up some of your time to do this. Um, I'm not going to talk relentlessly at you for two hours. This is going to be an initial presentation, and then uh, we'll do some actual hands-on improving Wikipedia. And uh, my goal here is just to get you uh, kind of over the threshold. Um, the technology aspect will be really quick to do. It's basically word processing. Uh, so there's some technology aspects of how the interface works. More important up front is to tell you about how Wikipedia works as a community and how uh, what the community standards are, basically how you get your contributions kept and seen as an improvement and how to avoid getting into conflict and getting pushback from the community. And I think if you've turned up to this session, you already understand why contributing to Wikipedia, improving Wikipedia is a good thing. Uh, but it's not just that it's improving Wikipedia, which is a free resource, which is one of the world's top five websites. It's also the benefits to the scientific literature in that Wikipedia is one of the main drivers of traffic to peer reviewed uh, resources that, that people do check the references in Wikipedia articles. Um, and uh, yeah, but getting scientific research summarized and linked in Wikipedia is a way for it to influence public debate and inform public debate uh, and uh, raise awareness of that particular bit of research. And so what drives my enthusiasm about it is that unlike the, the rest of the other top 100 websites, Wikipedia is charitable. There's no shareholder, there's no aim for shareholder value like the other big corporations that provide you free stuff on the internet. It's driven by this, this vision, which we take really seriously, that it's about every single human being freely sharing the sum of all knowledge. Plainly, we don't have the sum of all knowledge in Wikipedia right now. It's a work in progress, and uh, that's achieved by billions of little improvements made by uh, millions of different people. Rather than going straight into some bullet points of do's and don'ts, I want to do what I call wiki comprehension. So I'm going to look at a Wikipedia article. This is quite a well-developed one, and just observe some things about it and show you some information you can find out about it, which may not be obvious. Uh, so some of you may have seen this before, uh, but I think it's worth kind of looking at the process. Uh, so this is pretty well-developed, this article. There, there's a lot of structure. Uh, you can see it's illustrated with relevant images. Uh, the images have captions explaining their relevance. Um, because this is a huge topic, there's lots of links to sub-articles, um, so like country-specific articles. Um, if you're looking to improve a topic in, in Wikipedia, you might find the overview article on that topic is already pretty well developed and been actively maintained, but maybe a click or two away it will be a kind of an intersection, a specific article, this issue in this age group, this issue in this particular country or this period. And that might be much worse. So uh, if you have some expertise, there's a way to drill down and find articles that you can improve. Most articles on Wikipedia, the vast majority are not in a very high quality state. They're in quite the basic state. Um, so what you may have heard about Wikipedia is that editing is totally anonymous and there's no credit to authors. Um, and maybe you've heard it's like the Wild West that is just thrown together. There's no, uh, there's, it's not like a reviewed source. I'm going to click on this link called Talk. Uh, I understand a lot of experts don't click on this because you expect it to be the comments. You expect it to be like when there's a newspaper article online and then you click on the comments and it's just lots of idiots opinions and you don't want to on wikipedia it's different the talk page isn't about your opinions about the issue the talk page is about discussing how the article could be improved and reviewing its quality now there's a load of stuff here's a lot of banners and messages uh and it's a bit overwhelming but i'll point out so this has been reviewed and has been uh called a good article. So it has a good article badge. It's being reviewed by Wikipedians who weren't involved in creating it. Uh, 
And it'll even show the text of the review and the discussion between the reviewers and authors, exactly which review, with, uh, which version of the article was reviewed. And this talk page uh, is mainly for, yeah, you know, for reviewing, for raising issues. So um, you could post here, if there's some big structural problem with the article, uh, you could post about that here and say, I, I've been reading a book about this article and it's completely different from, from you know, a book about this topic and it's completely di different from this article. Um, maybe there's structural improvements or there's an important aspect of the topic which has been missed out by this article, but it's in these sources. Or it could be that this new paper or new book has been published about the topic. You can just put, post that. Here's a notification to the, the people who are editing the article. Um, so there's reviews, there's issues. If, the, if somebody's tagged the article as, as problematic, it's promotional, it's, it's insufficiently well-sourced, hopefully they'll have posted on the talk page about what exactly the issue is and what th that they think needs to be improved. Uh, I'll point out, so there are wiki projects. So these are behind the scenes things in Wikipedia, which are kind of communities of interested editors. They might be experts, they might be students, they might be people with a lot of books on this topic, they might be people who are just interested in kind of copy editing and elegantly phrasing uh, articles. Those people will collaborate, they've got kind of resources, they've got lists of the articles that they're working on, um, uh, issues with articles that have come up, and there's kind of a notice board where they can ask for help, like oh, I need a medical expert to review this and so on. Uh, any given Wikipedia article is probably the intersection of different groups of wiki projects, but th this is where you can kind of find uh, find help if you uh, get into a controversy or get into a disagreement. You can always reach out to a wider community of people and ask their opinion. Uh, so the talk page is useful. Before you go in and improve an article, it's really recommended to look and see if there are any ongoing issues or debates about the quality. The other thing I wanted to point out uh, is view history. It's not at all obvious what this does, and people don't click on it. This is the all of the different versions of this article over time and every edit and who made it. So this, again, it's the first time you see this. This is a confusing mass of letters and numbers. I'm going to ignore, actually, the, the history and focus on, at the top, this very useful collection of uh, special links. Uh, so you can do this from any page. One of these is the, the tool that tells you how many views this article gets per day. So, uh, and I can begin at zero to get a fairer graph and so, and I can customize the date range and so on. So uh, you can see how many views this is getting views by human users this is this is not counting web bots and other things that browse websites uh, you can see a daily average uh, you can compare different articles so this is getting about 20 views a day what's what's covid19 getting covid19 getting about 9000 views a day uh, so this illustrates that Wikipedia, for a lot of topics, is going to be one of the most read web pages. Um, for, for popular topics, whether it's academic or pop culture or whatever, uh, maybe thousands a day. For really obscure things, maybe only a dozen views a day, but a dozen views a day every day. Uh, so that's what 3,000 a year. Uh, every day. So even really obscure things that are just mentioned in a couple of papers in academic literature can get an audience that's much bigger than that obscure academic literature. Um, so you can you can do uh, right, so you can put up to 10 articles here and can see over time and kind of see bursts of interest if something's in the news. Um, uh, yeah, this is kind of a research tool itself. You can even look at other languages um, um, so, right, so we can see there are 181 different language versions of this article about this topic. 
Uh, none of them is the master version, so there's translations going between in every direction between them. Um, uh, yes, yeah, some topics won't have many different language versions. Some core topics will have over a hundred. So I'm going to go back. So that's an interesting thing to play with in itself. Also useful is this page statistics link. So I got to this by view history and then these links at the top. Page statistics is a summary of all the changes that have been made to this article. So it's going to tell us how this article came to be. Essentially, for instance, how many different editors have contributed to the article? Over 500. Over 500 different people and occasionally bots, occasionally even software, have written the West African Ebola virus article. Um, uh, so there's the side. So, so there have been four and a half thousand different versions. So this article, in which we saw in a very well-developed, very rich state, has come about. Maybe somebody just initially typed a sentence. There was Ebola in West Africa, and then someone comes along, makes a change. Someone comes along, adds some citations. That's happened four and a half thousand times, and that's how an article gets to a good state. And then we can see who the authors are. We see their their Wikipedia usernames. Um, we can see how much of the text each author is responsible for. So this is quite balanced. The, the text is, there's about five or six main authors, you could say. Um, uh, yeah, it's quite evenly balanced. Sometimes there's one main author and a lot of other people have made very minor edits. Sometimes there's like two or three main authors. Um, and then uh, these links are to the user page. Uh, Let's look at that. So people on Wikipedia can ha have the choice of whether to say a lot about themselves or nothing at all. Uh, you can use your real name or not. You can, um, you can say where in the world you are and what your job is or not. Uh, some people want to be very private and maybe they're editing about stuff that would get them in trouble in whatever jurisdiction they are. Um, some people want to put lots about themselves and kind of make a profile uh, and so on. But uh, yeah, we go to this. So th this guy actually is a doctor. Uh, he's not just calling himself Doc James as a username, and he's, he's verifiably a, a Canadian emergency doctor. So you can see evidence of people's expertise uh, do this. Um, so there is credit. You can, if you're the main author of an article or you've contributed substantially to it, you can demonstrate that you've done that with this tool. And this is this is publicly available information. Um, I wanted to say more about this article. Um, yeah, the, that uh, another structural thing I want to point out is the lead. Every Wikipedia article has a lead, and it's this bit before the structured area with headings. And this is a summary of the entire article. So it doesn't have to have, this has lots of footnoted numbered references. It, the leads doesn't usually have to have references because it's just repeating what's uh, elsewhere in the article. Um, it can, if the topic's controversial, you can put citations in the lead as well. And the lead should be proportional to the rest of the article. So if it's a short article, maybe only a couple of sentences in the lead. If it's a fully well-developed article with lots of sections like this, then you have a rich lead. Um, and this is the bit that's really got to be worded elegantly and accessibly for, to reach a public audience, because all you know about, a Wiki, about English Wikipedia is that the people really know English. You can't assume any other background knowledge. So everything's got to be put really simply and technical terms have got to be explained. Later on in the article, you can assume knowledge of technical terms because you've explained them. Um, so yeah, there is a quality scale, there is attribution. Uh, I won't go into how the quality scale works, but, but um, articles that are more complete and more thoroughly referenced and more elegant and readable are at a higher quality scale. And there's a lot of uh, work continually going on informally and formally reviewing articles and deciding what level they're at. So uh, Wikipedia is actually very concerned with quality, even if it's uh, even if only a tiny proportion of the articles actually reach uh, a kind of badged quality level. 
But I said I would tell you how Wikipedia works. And I think uh, the principles of interacting with it are summarized by this slogan, the free encyclopedia. If we unpack what is meant by a free encyclopedia, it kind of tells you what, uh, what contributing, what contributions are welcome. So let's just focus on the word encyclopedia, because encyclopedia is a particular kind of, of text, a particular kind of resource. It differs from a textbook, it differs from a research paper, it differs from a persuasive essay. So it's a summary of what's already been published. That's an aspect of it. Um, it's not your own opinions. It's not taking average of people's opinions. I think people have that misconception that people just throw in what they think and we take the average and that's the, uh, the wiki way. Um, if it's obvious what your opinion is on the topic you're editing about, you're probably editing badly. Uh, sometimes I summarize sources I don't agree with personally. So if I'm writing about a book, I've got to summarize the reviews of that book. And maybe some of those reviews I really disagree with, but to give a picture of how the book was received and why the book is important, I've got to summarize all the reviews fairly. And we don't expect people to take the, the word of strangers on the internet. Everything should be verifiable. Those numbered references with hopefully a link um, doesn't have to be to an online source, but it's preferable. Doesn't have to be an open access source, but that's preferable. Ideally, other people should be able to check statements on Wikipedia by visiting a link and not encountering a paywall and see for themselves and compare the text in Wikipedia with the original source and see for themselves if it's a fair summary. So that's one aspect of being an encyclopedia. Um, yeah, if in doubt, source everything, source every sentence, or at least source every paragraph. Also, another thing it means to be an encyclopedia is to have a threshold of notability. It's not for everything, it's not for trivia, and Wikipedia draws the line, and it varies for different subjects, but um, the topic of an article should have significant coverage in at least three sources. So not just a mention, but three sources and sources that are independent of the subject. So people come along and say, well, I've got, I've got a YouTube channel and I've got a Facebook and I've got a LinkedIn. Can I have a Wikipedia article? No, you've got to get coverage. You've got to get a magazine interview and a newspaper interview and a profile in a, a industry newsletter. Um, so if there's a book chapter about something in two papers, there could probably be a Wikipedia article about that. Um, there's arguments about this. This kind of preserves the biases in the existing publishing system. So you can argue that there should be more lax notability for, for things, the topics that are missed out by traditional publishing. And that's something we're pushing on. But that's a useful guideline um, if, you're, if you're thinking of creating an article from scratch. Um, yeah, Wikipedia's voice, what's stated as fact in Wikipedia has to be based on academic consensus, on, on the best available information. You can still say, according to this paper, according to these researchers, blah, blah, blah. So you can put something not in, not in Wikipedia's voice, but in a particular, attributed to a particular source, and then not claim it as fact, but say it's been stated by some particular group or some by a significant researcher or commentator, and so on. Um, Sources work differently for different topics. If I was going to claim something about the causes or cures of disease, I'd need a systematic review of research. It wouldn't be good to even have a single peer-reviewed paper. It would have to be, I'd have to demonstrate a, a review, a, to demonstrate a consensus. For climate, that would be things like the IPCC reports or similar uh, review reports. Describing into individual bits of research. Um, yeah, you'd expect a peer-reviewed paper, not um, not even kind of a newspaper article about the research. You'd have to go to the original paper, um, maybe in an open access repository. But that's different from if you're writing about current affairs or you're writing a biography of, a, of an academic or you're writing about an organization. Uh, we don't wait for peer-reviewed research about this person's life or about what's happening now but you're looking for 
broad sheet as opposed to tabloid papers and magazines and industry newsletters. You're looking for reputable sources that, that have something to lose um, if they get it wrong. Um, you can occasionally use self-published sources by an expert. So if there's a blog by someone who has already published peer-reviewed research, um, a, a scientist, museum curator, whatever, and they're explaining a mainstream view, then you can use those to fill out an article. So we wouldn't use a self-published source to kind of overturn an academic uh, consensus. We'd wait for peer review to, to assess that new, uh, that new challenge. Um, but explaining a mainstream point of view, it's okay to use very specific self-published sources. So I've said an encyclopedia has a particular style. It's not like a textbook. It's not like a, a student essay. It's not like a persuasive argument. Um, we've got to represent controversy fairly. So if there is a controversy, we've got to say what the, the different uh, reputable sources say. But we don't have false balance on Wikipedia. We don't put conspiracy theories or denial on the same uh, level as actual research. Um, like some media outlets do. So that's a sense of neutrality. Another sense of neutrality is the kind of descriptive tone that we use. So you might want to write about the scientist and you might want to say she's really influential, she's innovative, she's um, uh, kind of a thought leader, she's a leading scientist in her field. And those things might all be true, but they're not kind of descriptive, factual things that each of which is checkable. Instead, you could say she held the chair at this university in this. She was the editor of this academic journal. She received this award from a scholarly society. Each of those things will have some where you can check and verify that uh, that, that actually happened. And if you put lots of those into an article, then you will convey that this is an important person. This is the leading innovator and so on. But you let the reader des decide that last step for themselves. You just just provide as many just purely descriptive facts as possible. So we don't tell the reader what to do. We're not supposed to address the reader or, or address them as you or tell them to, um, to what to do as a next step or prompt them to reflect on or ask questions. Things you might do in a textbook, uh, we don't do in Wikipedia. It's a, it's a definite style of text. And I've mentioned accessibility and yeah, the first time you use any specialist words or phrases, things that aren't in just the common dictionary words, explain what they mean, spell out the acronyms. Luckily, we have wiki links. Luckily, we can, so if I'm talking about a PET scan, I can say it's a, a positron, positron emission tomography scan. It's uh, maybe give some context why I'm mentioning it, saying it's a kind of scan that measures blood flow but then link to the article on PET scan. So the readers who don't know what that is can open that other tab and find out that backward information. Uh, and as I said, you can get more technical as you go further into the article where you've already introduced the, the terminology. So free, free has, uh, is, is laden with meaning. It's not just that you can access Wikipedia without paying money. Lots of sites you can access without paying money. Wikipedia is free in the free speech sense, in that you have rights that cannot be taken away. You can, uh, it's not just text and images on the website you can visit, you can take and remix this stuff. And you don't need to ask permission, you can go ahead and do it. Uh, you just can't pass off the work as your own if it's not your own. You need to give credit. So um, people are doing this all the time for to for educational purposes, say putting Wikipedia, a customized version on laptops or USB drives to send out to people, to send out to rural schools in Africa or Nepal where um, there's less internet access, um, that they, they can get an encyclopedia in a chosen language, maybe customized to be child safe. Um, so there's all kinds of remixes, translating a Wikipedia article into another language is a kind of remix, and that's happening all the time. We, we saw 181 different versions of the, the COVID article. Um, uh, so Wikipedia improves by being altered by other people. So we've got to have the legal right to alter it and make derivative versions. 
And this means we can't use copyrighted material uh, that, that's where the rights are reserved, and that's just about anything you'd find online. So it's tempting to do a Google search, find some text, which is exactly the text you, you want to summarize this topic, and this looks ideal, but you can't paste that in. You've usually got to summarize it in your own words. It might be an exception if it's an open access publication with a, a suitable license, but that's rare, but we can talk about that if that comes up. So yeah, you can translate from other versions of Wikipedia. I've been uh, doing that recently, Google translating a German article and then going through and correcting the kind of the Google oddness to make it a more human article. It's so important to write in your own words. A past trainee of mine got an article deleted because she wanted to write an article about a particular scientist and she took that scientist's CV, pasted it in, and then went through changing words so it wasn't exactly the same. And that counts as close paraphrasing and Wikipedia is really concerned about that. That still counts as copyright violation. So that whole thing was deleted, had to be rewritten from scratch. So it's it's tempting to uh, to kind of reuse. I find the way to work is to read something and then digest it and mull it over and then then think how would you explain this to someone else, and uh, come up with your own original text. Uh, yeah, we we can use quotes, but you attribute quotes. It's pretty obvious. So it's unlikely, especially if you follow all the points I've just said, it's unlikely that you'll get reverted. Um, or that people will challenge the article you're creating. But we need to prepare you for this because it can be discouraging if it happens. I just want to say, don't panic. A wiki stores all changes made to it. So if you wrote a paragraph and then someone came and deleted that paragraph, they think it was better the way it was before. That text is not lost. That text is still in there. We can get it back. Find out what the... the person's complaint is and you can debate it with them it's don't take it personally because the person doing this has no idea who you are and again it's not gone forever uh, i have to, uh, it's not obvious because it's so well countered but wikipedia is under siege it's under siege from pr people it's under siege from people promoting their business or their political views um, and people are going in with an agenda, trying to create articles about uh, you know, new startup companies or things that aren't really notable. Um, a Wikipedian who looks at your edit maybe already saw a thousand edits today by people who weren't really building an encyclopedia, but just doing something promotional. Especially if you're a new user, those attract more suspicion. There's more trust for established users, understandably. Spammers will create a bunch of new articles and then go in, and those articles will paste in external links to things. So if you're doing that, say if you were to go into Wikipedia with a new article and paste in lots of external links to the same project, that gets a lot of suspicion. You'd, you might get reverted. So be cautious with your first few edits. Over time, you can build trust. And I've shown you the talk page. The talk page is where we sort out these disagreements. I think I've improved the article by adding this paragraph. Other people think it was better the way it was and they want to delete this paragraph. So we start it on the talk page and uh, we each post what changes or what we want kept about the article and reason it out. And if we don't come to a conclusion, if it's just one person against one person, we just ask a wider community. We put out a call for people interested in this topic to come in. So advice for succeeding on the talk page is stay focused on uh, people's behavior. Don't speculate about why people are opposing you. Don't say, well, you just don't want a good article about climate change on Wikipedia. That doesn't lead anywhere. Just focus on changes to the article and how you, you justify them. Don't say, well, I'm, I'm researching this topic at the University of Leeds. I'm qualified. I've got a PhD or whatever. That doesn't help. Um, I, th I find I, I get um, given a lot of leeway and treated well because I have a PhD and I mentioned that, but I'm not automatically assumed to be right. I've got to demonstrate I'm right by having the sources. Don't, if you find yourself uh, saying, well, in my experience, I've experienced this myself. I was there when this happened. 
that's a losing battle because you're asking people to trust a stranger on the internet and people shouldn't be doing that. What works is, again, the sources, even something like a, a book has been published on this topic by Oxford University Press. Here's the link to the, the table of contents of that book. And this is, a, this is going to be a guide for how we're going to structure the article because it shows kind of the importance given to different aspects of the topic. Uh, so, yeah, argue from sources, maybe quote a bit of the source if you're arguing about the wording of something. There will be consensus. There will be decisions taken by the community which are probably already on the talk page. So maybe the, the particular language with which, which describe a controversial issue, maybe that's already been hashed out. So again, it's worth reading through the talk page to see if a particular issue is being discussed. If there's already a community consensus, then usually you've got to go with that unless there's some overriding reason. But above all, stay focused on what would make a good encyclopedia article. Good, a, a good encyclopedia article is an accessible summary of a lot of sources that are the right kind of source, a comprehensive survey of, of reliable sources structured in an accessible way linked to other knowledge. And just stay focused on that. That's probably what the other person is thinking. They're, th they're there to improve the encyclopedia as well, unless they're just a blatant vandal. Um, so you just debate towards what would make an improvement to this. And what I've summarized there is what's called the five pillars of Wikipedia, the five principles of how we work. <clears throat> so Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. And I've said that that has implications for what kinds of things have articles. And it's also implications for the style that we write. Um, neutral, I've said we've got a particular approach to representing controversy but not fake controversy, We'd not, we don't include conspiracy theories. Free content turns out to be really important. The text has got to be not encumbered by copyright. The images have got to be freely reusable by anyone. And that means being original or taking things from um, fully open access sources where there, there's permission to reuse. Um, ideally based on civility and respect. And I think it's much more respectful than a lot of other social media platforms and not bound by hard rules, that there are lots of rules, there are lots of policies and guidelines, and it is intimidating, and it, we there's a lot of expectations on newcomers. But ultimately, it's about making a good encyclopedia, and you already know intuitively what a good encyclopedia is. So, um, and that's the goal that we're here for. If you're, if you contribute to making the encyclopedia better, you'll be appreciated. And people who are here to promote or spam or push an agenda will um, will meet resistance. At that point, I'd like to stop and take questions because I've I've kind of whizzed through quite a lot there, and um, we're going to come to the interface and how edits are made next. But I'm. I want to give people to say a chance if there's something I've gone over too quickly or about how Wikipedia works as a process and as a community. And I see there's a chat. I haven't been following the chat. Nick, do you want to? Uh, it's just me, uh, Martin, to be okay. honest, um, posting links um, and a colleague that was struggling to get in that's here now. Um, I mean, I was just highlighting a, a thing that, that you helped me with because I still find it, you know, worrisome should we say sort of engaging with wikipedia and i don't know if you remember martin but one of my first experiences was when i updated a bunch of um links to a cited research article to the open access version in the white rose research online repository which i now do routinely to make sure that um, a person reading wikipedia can access that open access version of research um, and i was immediately flagged for spam and there was a big sort of debate yeah. around what a repository was and whether it was valid and all this kind of thing and uh you obviously be more familiar with the, with the so that's yeah a good example in that um there was someone there who probably had been um dealing with hundreds of spammers hundreds of people posting links to their website and then they see you this new account who actually is improving encyclopedia and making it better and more useful but paste pasting in ex links to a particular site into different articles that's kind of the heuristic for behavior, for spammer behavior. Um, uh, and uh, this person is administrator is probably an unpaid volunteer who, who uh, yeah, has already been 
already looked at a thousand pages that day. So people, there can be misunderstandings, but misunderstandings can be talked out and you can, so you were able to explain in that case how uh, you were benefiting the encyclopedia. Uh, so people make snap judgments that might be wrong, but you can talk to them and explain your position um, and yeah, get the, uh, get your changes made, but it might take some patience and it might take some kind of persuasion and explanation on the talk page. Yeah. Uh, and then Chris has just said in the chat, yeah, everything was clear, really useful overview for the worried novice. So I don't know if anybody else would like to comment. Otherwise Another good point from your experience is that the first few edits you make shouldn't be adding in external links. Yeah. Uh, I really recommend the first few edits you make make some actual textual improvements to articles, yeah. add in some more text, rewrite something to be more elegant, add a citation to something that's missing citation, make those kinds of improvements. And then other editors, because your contribution record is public, other editors can see, oh, this is someone here to improve the encyclopedia. Yeah. And as part of doing that, they're adding some external links. Yeah. Uh, so that takes more time and patience, but that's a way to, to give you a better chance that things will go more smoothly when you do. And no doubt you'll come on to this, but I just, you know, I do still worry about, you know, my affiliation with the University of Leeds. I do have a disclaimer on my account because um, I routinely cite Leeds research with the proviso that, you know, I, did, I am doing it to improve the encyclopedia, but, I, you know, I do, I do still have some, some concerns about that that no doubt you'll 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 look into so that it actually is important i'll address that now yeah so there's conflict of interest rules uh very important on wikipedia there's a paid editing rule which you can make edits on paid time for work and a lot of people are oh, and no, i make paid edits you've got to declare on your user page um that you are a paid editor and who you're who you're being paid by so it's okay to do it so long as you declare it it's in the terms and conditions of the site you have to declare paid editing so i've got a couple of notices on my page i'm being paid by such and such to work on articles about such and such there's a conflict of interest rule and it's really important to um to observe this that you can't edit about yourself or your employer so if you're <clears throat> employed at the university of leeds you can't you really shouldn't edit the University of Leeds article, but that doesn't stop you proposing things on the talk page. So you can propose a change on the talk page. Uh, you can provide a source, you know, according to, you know, maybe the vice chancellor's changed and you say the, the announcement of the new vice chancellor is here. Uh, so please could somebody update this uh, in the article itself and other people who maintain the article will make that change. Um, if somebody is being libeled or if you're being libeled or that there's something like a, breach with law, then you can go in, then, then all rules are off, you can go in and change that. Um, so there are specific um, circumstances when you can make a change about yourself or your employer, but it's best to sort of keep arm's length and persuade other editors to make the change rather than making the change yourself. Because there are politicians who go into Wikipedia and delete sleaze. There'll be a write-up about how they accepted money uh, or how they did this corrupt thing. And a politician or this stuff will go in and delete that bit of the well, article. And then that's been monitored and people yeah. will put it back. There's but been people some, are trying to do that. There's been high profile cases, haven't there, where they can drag the IP to the Houses of Parliament and that kind of thing. Yeah, this is an advantage of having a login, of having a username. Because when you make an edit and you're logged in, it's not recorded where in the world you are. Whereas if you're not logged in, it actually records your IP number, which can be narrowed down to a particular building. And this is how we know that edits are being made from the Houses of Parliament or from Congress and states and from, from other institutions like that, which are kind of conflict of interest edits. Um, but yeah, people want to it not to be public where they are and who they are, again, because they're writing about atheism or homosexuality or democracy or the, well, the things that would get them in trouble uh, where they are. And then there was just one question there um, from Joanna that you talked about text. Any comments about images? I mean, we are talking, I think, primarily today about Wikipedia and maybe, in, you know, later in the month we can look a bit more detail to Wikimedia Commons and Wikimedia Data, but I guess we might touch on those today. Yeah, I'll say a bit about image uploading. 
um, so this is a weird situation for sites that um, the, all the images, video clips, and audio clips that illustrate Wikipedia articles are hosted on a different site called Wikimedia Commons. And so everything on this site, which is, is uh, tens of thousands, I think it's 85,000 different resources, um, they, they all should be freely reusable by anyone for any purpose, but you can insist on attribution. So, and a lot of these are things like figures from open access research papers. Um, or they can be collections, somebody's got a collection of species photographs or botanical photographs or whatever, uh, can if they can be shared under free license. So a lot of this, um, you'd imagine that some of these images come from people just going out and taking a photograph or something, but a lot of these are from scholarly and cultural collections. And having them on this server means they can be used across lots of other sites. They can be used to illustrate all the different language versions of Wikipedia and the sister projects of Wikipedia where people are making educational content and other sites. You can set up your own wiki and point it towards Wikimedia Commons as its file source. And then so when you type the file name on your wiki, the, the actual file will appear from Commons and be embedded in your site. So um, it's really useful and it, there's lots of reuse and an image can get a huge audience by being used in dozens of different Wikipedia pages and multiple languages and other wikis, but it's got to be copyright cleared. It's got to have the right copyright status. The person owning it has got to apply um, a, a very free license, an attribution only license or an attribution share alike license. And a lot of what goes on is, again, remixing. So you might take a, a diagram with English labels and somebody who's Arabic might want there to be Arabic labels or they might want um, like a simplified diagram that they can provide an Arabic key to. Uh, or people might want to take a complex diagram and just take one bit, like the, a diagram of the ear, and they might want to extract the bit about the inner ear because that's the article they're illustrating. So there's, uh, you've got to give up some control. You've got to let people remix and make versions, but you still get credit, you still get attribution. Um, and you can, and on with Commons, we give contextual information. So if this is from a paper or if this is a supporting bit of media that supports a paper, we give the full citation, give the, the DOI and name the authors and so on. Uh, so we provide a paper trail back to where this image has come from. But yeah, with that, with that question uh, session, I'm, I will go into the editing. And I've got a completely fresh um, account. And uh, so I'm, I'm having the experience that uh, a lot of you will have uh, where there's a lot of customized stuff for new editors. Um, and what I suggest is that we play in the sandbox. So once you're logged in, and I hope you've already got Wikipedia accounts. If you haven't, then please create one with the, the create account link in the top right. Um, but if you already have an account and are logged in, um, let's make test edits in the sandbox. The sandbox is, it, it's publicly viewable, but it's part of uh, my user space. So it's not part of the encyclopedia, it's mine. And the sandbox is what you can play in and not hurt yourself. Uh, I'm going to switch to the visual editor. We're going to be doing visual editing today. You can edit directly in wiki code, uh, but it's possible to improve Wikipedia and write articles without learning wiki code in this word processor style interface. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing. Um, so I've got, so I've logged in and I clicked sandbox, which is one of these links in the top right, which is going to follow me and going to be available everywhere uh, I go in, in Wikipedia. Um, I'm going to get rid of this modal. Um, and so there's a cycle. So I'm going to, uh, there's a cycle of initial, initiating an edit, making a change, and then publishing the edit. So I can type anything here and it isn't publicly viewable. It's not going on the site. This is just on my computer. Uh, so I can type, well, my name is 
Martin. I. Uh, this being a word processor, we've got tools that can make changes to the text. So we, we use bold very sparingly, but we have bold and italics and uh, some more variations through that tool. So I've typed some text. I'm in the sandbox, so I'm not like vandalizing an article. Uh, um, first thing I want to do is save this text. So I publish page. Every time you make an edit, this edit summary box comes up. And here you just put a couple of words to describe what you're doing. So this might be added citation or added image or um, restructured article or, or elegant wording or something like that. What change you made, this will be stored in the, the page history. And this gives other people looking over the page history an idea of what's going on. So I'm gonna, my edit summary is just gonna be start of the page. Just a comment. There's nothing here. Sorry, Martin, just a comment to see somebody missed how to get to the Weissenberg editor. If you could just recap that. How to get to here. So I got to here by logging in and then clicking on the sandbox. So if you've got a new account, the sandbox will be a red link. It'll be a page that doesn't exist yet. And when I clicked on sandbox, it, um, it offered me to edit or to switch to the visual editor. Uh, if you're not in the, the visual editor, I'm going to publish this page. If you haven't got the visual editor, maybe you've uh, selected Wikicode previously. In preferences at the top, most of these things you don't need to pay attention to, uh, but there's preferences, there's a tab for editing, and then there's an editing mode. I think so, which could be Always give me the visual editor, always give me the source editor, the Wikicode editor, or show me both editor tabs. I'm going to switch to show me both. So I always have the option of Wikicode or visual editor. And then I have to save that preference. So you might be on show me both editor tabs or always give me source editor. You can get the visual editor by um, show both tabs. But I have to save that. So was that the question? Did I hear that right? how to get to where I am. Yes, that, that was, thank Martin. Right. Um, so now I have an edit, which gives me the visual editor interface and edit source, which gives me wiki code, which we won't be doing today, but I can keep going through this process. So making a change is clicking edit. The interface comes up. Uh, I'm gonna give context for people who don't know what Bristol is. And that's what this button does. So the first time I use this, this pop-up comes up, uh, but so it will give me different things that are called Bristol and ask which I mean, or I could type in something different. I could like, so whoops. So I could, I could make a misleading link, but I, but we don't want to do that. I actually want to link to Bristol, the city. And again, publish changes, I added a link. Um, we can test that link, or uh, yeah, I can mouse over it. So that I've mentioned that the evolution of an article is just this process applied thousands of times, billions of times in the whole encyclopedia. Uh, and we looked at an article which had, what, four and a half thousand edits by 500 different users. I'm going to do this a bit more. Uh, uh, Um, we also have headings and subheadings. Oh. To my autobiography, early life, I was born in a humble home. Oops. I think a citation is needed for that month. Citation's what we're coming to next. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to publish that. Um, lies, it's all lies. We had it some reason, it's all lies. 
Um, and I'm now a billionaire astronaut. So, so, so that's what I want you to do now. Make, uh, just get some text on your sandbox page or on your user page. Make some stylistic change to it. Maybe have a heading, maybe have bold or italics link to something. And so use those aspects and do it a few times. Just go through the process, edit, make a change, publish changes and very briefly describe what you did. And please do comment on this. I know it's strange when, uh, you know, we're in this environment, but if anybody's comfortable to sort of describe any problems you're having, that's always useful, I think, for Martin. Yeah, I like to be in the room with people and I like to kind of wander around the room and look over people's shoulders and make sure everybody's on the same page and that, that this is so hard this time. So please do vocalise. I'm, I'm kind of going along quite quickly. So it's, it's totally fair to... to say, to say stop where how did you do that i mean just on that note martin i don't know we won't put you on the spot now i mean obviously we've only got limited time but i don't know if you might be willing to travel to leeds at some point if that was possible i'd love to do that yeah yeah um so maybe that's something joanna and chris and i can discuss it might be useful yeah. but i'll show what's happening this isn't essential if you're so do make edits but what's happening uh, as I make these edits, I'm building up a history. And when I click view history, so we, when we did this on a, a, a very well-developed article, we got thousands of things here. This is showing what an article history it is. So the most recent changes at the top, each change is listed. And it says when that change happened, who made the change, what, how much was changed, so there's a green number for like how much bigger is the article? And then what was the edit summary? So back at seven minutes two, I started the page. Then at 9.55, I added a link. And then a minute after that, I added some lies. Uh, so this will build up. So you can see from this example how a, an article builds up. If there are multiple people working on an article, then multiple usernames would be appearing here. I can get back by clicking user page or by clicking sandbox again. Yeah, in wiki editing, training sessions, there's kind of a hush that comes over the room as you sense a change in the atmosphere of the room as people get absorbed into it. And so that this is really hard to do uh, over, uh, over Zoom. Um, so make a couple of changes. So hopefully you've been through the process a couple of times. You press edit, you've made a change, then you've pressed publish, and then you put in an edit summary. And this is writing your edits to the site. This is public. This is a public page uh, now that other people can visit, but there's not much particular reason to visit the sandbox because it's just the text area. <coughs> but yeah, maybe I should put in a citation. Fortunately, putting in citations to Wikipedia to, to published research is really, really easy, and other authoring systems really should adopt this. Um, I'm going to put a uh, astronaut. A citation is needed for my little potted biography. And uh, this is what this button is for. Um, <clears throat> so you go to the end of the sentence that you're, that you're justifying after the punctuation and click cite. So here you can paste in the digital object identifier of a paper, which is just a string of numbers, essentially, the ISBN of a book. Um, these are PubMed IDs for, for kind of medical related research. I happen to know that eight ones in a row is a valid PubMed ID. So if I put in that, that will actually generate Hopefully that will perform a lookup and get all of the citations. Great. So from that PubMed ID, which is this, 
It's got me the author, date, link, title, um, all of the, a, a full citation. Um, so I can insert that. I can make changes. So it doesn't like the date. So it doesn't like the date. Oh, because the date has come back as 2011 and maybe it wants it in another format, like November 2000. Apply changes. Yeah, it's happy with that. There's no edit warning there. So that's one way to put in citation. Maybe I'm working from an old book or, or some paper publication. It doesn't have an ISBN or a DOI. Um, I want to put in the manual fields. So that's what manual is for. So I choose a book, then put in the details of the book. Uh, this is autobiography of Martin Poulter, billionaire astronaut. This would get me in so much trouble if I did in an actual article. Um, <laughs> It's Oxford. Uh, again, so I put in whatever details I have, and if it's a book, probably you've got to put in the page number so I can insert that. That's another way to um, put in the citation. So a citation, you can get a complete citation from a PubMed ID, an ISBN, a digital object identifier. If you haven't got those things, you can manually put in the details of the book or journal or, or website. Um, once in a while, the, the lookup function won't work. So uh, occasionally you have to, to uh, type in the details yourself. Um, and then you can reuse uh, these citations I've created. This is, all, no, this is all still on my computer because I haven't published these changes yet. So another blatant lie. Here. And then, well, the citation for this is the same as the citation here. So I'm going to, again, click cite. I go to the end of the sentence. I click cite. And now I can reuse. And this will give me all of the articles, citations. And I click one to select it. So now I can publish changes. What did I add? Cite. Publish that. So now we've got the inline citations with the numbers, and we've got this little block of references at the foot of the page. So please go ahead and try that yourself. Uh, put in a fake citation. Um, if you've got a DOI handy, again, if you if you just want a PubMed ID, eight ones in a row is a valid one. Uh, if, if you've got a PubMed ID or an ISBN of a book, uh, try looking that up, try putting a citation to the book into your sandbox. Does anybody want to own up to having found any difficulties or is it pretty straightforward? It is hard not being in the room. I did show somebody a draft I was working on about a scientific topic. And they said, oh, you've put a lot of effort into putting in all of the author names, all these papers, and all, you, you, you didn't need to do that. I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> I just had the DOIs and it, Wikipedia generated all itself. Well, Jamie and Helen seem to be managing. And Chris. I mean, it's probably not necessarily to today, right now, Martin, but uh, one of the things that I've been, I tend to do now is adding an open access link as well. I'm still not entirely sure I'm doing that the right way. Um, you know, where a version is behind a paywall and actually adding that, that link in. Yeah, there is an archive link option. I think I can do this. Uh, so that this is the kind of fully formatted um, citation that's been extracted from PubMed. So I can edit this, as I've shown you, if I'm not happy with what the, the citation details that are looked up automatically, I can make changes. Maybe I've put in the ISBN and it's given me the details of the book. And now I want to say which pages in the book I'm, I'm using. Uh, so there are lots of these fields that I can manually 
describe. And so if, if I got something to, to JSTOR, for example, I can mention here that I got it to JSTOR. Uh, but there are, a, okay, there are a load more fields that I can add. Uh, so original date, it, it, a book might have editors as well as authors. I might want to put in the editors as well as the authors if it's not looked up. Uh, but yes, yeah, some of these, um, we can even record if the DOI is broken or if the web link is broken. Uh, you can have an archive URL. So, so yeah, there should be a field for kind of the, the preprint or an open access version, but it's, it's acceptable to use an archive. If there's an, another site which has this paper that isn't the official publisher's site, and maybe it has it on open access when the official publisher has it behind the paywall, you can put that in the archive URL and the date. Um, so that's an option, put in alternative URLs. And yeah, a lot of, we, we've seen that Wikipedia readers, a proportion of them do like to visit the links and check the links. And a lot of them are outside academia and they really appreciate a non paywalled version of the citation. So I'm going to put in just another URL. OK, so archive URL requires archive date. Um, I've just linked one, that, so the, the Wilson Armstead one, Martin, because um, that's the method I use. So I've, uh, that's an example. I'll, I'll, do you know this better than me? I will remind myself has done so you can just put text into so this is an oh example. great so the link here goes to the the white rose repository yeah whereas um, the, the this DOI, DOI link will go to the official it. publication I suspect Taylor at Francis there we go um yeah and so it's archived from the so the original so we've got we've got the link to the Taylor and Francis maybe paywalled version or the, the published yeah, version. We've got the like link that. to the White Rose ePrint. So yeah, both readers and publishers should be happy with that. Yeah. So I, I, obviously it's, I didn't remove the DOI. That stays as the version of record, but it does also include the open access link to the White Rose repository. Right. And so I'll, I'll do the next step. The next thing you might be interested in, again, I'll do edit, I'll make a change and I'll publish is putting in an image. So I want, so I'm already in the edit. Um, maybe it's not obvious. It's not obvious. It's not well designed, but the way to put in an image is with this insert menu. So uh, insert images and media. This is going to give me access to the 85 million things in Wikimedia Commons. And I just need to put in the file name. I don't know of a file name, but I want, let's say I want a picture of an astronaut. Try, try Pete map. Pete's map, okay. Yeah, that's, that's one of the ones that we've got in for, it's all one word, I think. Great. Uh, so, ah, multilinguality. Yeah, uh, Richard did that. So uh, that's uh, an example of how that's been modified. Right. It's been translated to Welsh. So I get, I put in my term, I get a gallery of files that match that term. I can select one. There'll be more information about it uploaded by OA Nick, uploaded three years ago. Um, what's the license? What's the, the conditions of me reusing this image but, uh, outside Wikipedia? Uh, so I can look at it. I get a bigger preview and I decide to use this. And then I caption this peak map, whatever caption I want to put there um, and insert. And then I published that. Oops. My typing is not very good today. So now you're uh, a billionaire astronaut with an interesting peak distribution. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good job this is in the, uh, the sandbox. So because this is a new account, I've deliberately got a brand new account for this session. Uh, When I make certain kinds of link, I will be asked to do this capture to prove I'm a human. This only applies in kind of your first 10 edits or your first few edits. 
after a while, it will be satisfied that I'm a human being and will no longer prompt me to do this. But if you put in a, an external link in one of your first edits, it will... Uh... So this is because, you know, because I put an external link, I put the example.org uh, external link. So yeah, it's very suspicious of people putting in external links in their first few, say their first 10 edits. Um, uh, and so you get, get extra security measures, but it's only on a new account over time, you won't have to do that, it'll be, it'll be much easier. So this is another argument for just making kind of textual improvements to articles. Um, but there we go. So now the image is embedded from Commons in this article. If I click on it, I will get it much bigger size. I will get some credit to where this is from. Um, and I can actually look up more details about the image. This takes me almost to Commons. Yeah, this takes me to Commons. So here's a much more thorough description of what this image is. And I've got the DOI for the original paper this is from, and I've got the terms under which I can reuse this image. Um, so this, the same process of edit, insert images, media, could also insert video clips, audio clips, static images, diagrams. Um, I said we like SVG on common. So we like a lot of different image formats. We can host JPEGs and GIFs and, and so on. Um, SVG we really like because that's a vector diagram format and it's really easy to edit. Um, and it's very remixable and it's an open format um, and it survives being scaled to any resolution. Um, and it's maybe worth looking at commons. So this is the common site, commons.wikimedia.org, a collection of 85 and a half thousand, sorry, 85 and a half million reusable media files. And it has a category system and it has its own uh, kind of arcane way. There's no kind of super structured way to organize all these things, uh, but you can browse images, sounds, videos, things by topic. And uh, things will be in, let me go back to the peat map image. In fact, let me not edit this. I'm going to get more details about this. If I scroll right to the foot of the page, I will get categories and categories will be similar kinds of thing, maybe from the same source or the same language or the same uh, kind of thing. And that's useful to see and on also on the Wikimedia Commons page for the uh, the media file, we have where this is being used. So all the languages in which so this is being used in Chinese Wikipedia, although it's an English language article. Um, here it is in Chinese Wikipedia. So you can trace uh, how your image is used once you've uploaded it. If you bulk upload thousands of images, there are ways to track all the different languages in which those images are being used and how many views they're getting and so on. Yeah, I mean, this is this was one of my early attempts. So the, I added it to the English Wikipedia page and obviously the other ones have been sort of organic from then. So it's, it's an example I still use. And that's kind of one of the things that we were hoping to sort of explore through this project, I think, you know. Yeah. Um, images. Uh, and you'll have more success oh, if it's a high quality image. I mean, this is a super quality image, really enormous resolution. Um, obviously, I've got a warning kind of, about the resolution. I noticed just now. If you scroll up, it tells you it's too high resolution or something. Yeah. So but that's kind of good. That's kind. Of, no, oh yeah. So there's a there's a special viewer for huge images, so it doesn't overload people's connections if they've got a slow connection. Um, so uh, so that's kind of good. That means no one's going to come along with a higher resolution version of the same thing. Yeah, if it's internationalizable, that helps. Um, and yeah, maybe people make derivative versions that are customized to the particular topic or the particular language, uh, the particular article in which they're using it. Um, but hopefully they should, they should link back. So you've got this other versions facility where you can link to like, yeah. derivative images. And just to, uh, and the, the peat map is actually our most popular data set, you know, presumably by virtue of the fact that it's it's linked and cited and all the DOI points back to our data set. Yeah. Can I just say as well, Martin, sorry, that uh, I just noticed I'm not that used to using the dashboard. So I've just spotted that there were four accounts pending 
um, that I needed to create the accounts for. So I hope that hasn't caused any problems. I saw Jamie was one of them. Um, I didn't get the other. Okay, name. can that be sorted? I've, I've just pressed a button, so that has created right. an account. Cool. But cool. if um, you know, uh, I wasn't sure whether they were perhaps struggling to actually follow along because they were waiting for me to approve those accounts through the dashboard. Okay, cool. We've been doing simple stuff. So I recommend anyone who's just got an account active now to recap what we did. We went to the sandbox, which once you've logged in, you have these links in the top right. Um, uh, click edit and then select the visual editor. And that gives us this interface. And because it's a sandbox, you can put anything there. And I recommend you go through the process of edit, make, just add some text. Uh, we've been seeing how to add a citation add an image. Uh, these buttons at the top are most self-explanatory, but go through that a few that process a few times, make a change. And publish changes and get in the habit of writing that edit summary. It may seem balmy at this point because the edit summary is not going to be read by anybody, but when you're you're editing an article that's also being edited by 4,000 other people, they will want to see in a quick overview what changes you're making, how you're describing the changes. So um, expanded text and save that. Do, that. do a few test edits like that and see, after you've done them, click view history and that will, you'll see the summary of what you've done and see how view history works. It is all of the changes made to a page um, we can even see the individual changes and browse them um, and who made them. This is going to be useful if we're looking at, uh, so if I'm looking at West Bank Wall graffiti art, I want to know, where, is this being actively edited? Has this not been touched for months or is this being actively edited now? I can go to view history and at the top will be the most recent change to this article, which is this morning. Um, six parts night. So that tells, oh, this is pretty, oh, a lot of edits on 5th of July. So this is pretty actively edited now. Some might say they haven't been edited in six months. So that's useful to know to go in if you're going into uh, something that's already controversial, lots of editors involved, or you're improving something that's kind of neglected. And um, it, you kind of want, if you want to improve something, you want to find something that's quite that's got low down and quality scale, maybe what's called a stub is just a little bit of text and isn't being actively edited now. That's what when you're um, most likely to make a change that's, that's not interfered with. So I think there'll be a category uh, bio, Uh, okay, so that once you've made some test edits on your sandbox, maybe you want to go to your user page and create your user page and some statement of who you are, um, but you can try and find articles to improve. So I've gone to, to a category called biology stubs. Uh, there will be other kinds of stubs as well. So I suppose category, colon, psychology stubs, or um, history stubs. Just, just sorry, Martin, but just on yep. the user, user page, could because um, it's one of those things that I, I, I think I didn't put anything on mine for ages. I did just link it before, and I've got sort of a pretty generic statement on mine um, that, you know, a conflict of interest statement. I mean, is it, it's advisable for, for colleagues to do that from the University of Leeds, is it, and to state their affiliation with the University of Leeds? Would that be? I, I would recommend that, especially if you're paying on, if you, sorry, if you're editing on paid time, it, it's the terms and conditions of the site you've got to state. It doesn't stop you from editing, and Wikipedia wants all kinds of experts, librarians, curators, researchers to edit. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, stating who your employer is, right, and th this is great, what you've done is great, so you've said who your employer is, um, what your background is, what your interest is, what your agenda is that brings you to Wikipedia, 
Um, and uh, this is great. And you referenced the conflict of interest page. If you're interested, there's a lot of policies and guidelines that could be accessed by going to Wikipedia colon something or WP colon something. So if I go to WP colon, so this isn't part of the encyclopedia, it's something in, in the background, and then do COI for conflict of interest. Uh, so there's a lot of these kind of acronyms. It's a, there's an acronym soup, unfortunately. Um, I get to this page, so I could have typed out in full, Wikipedia colon conflict of interest. This is the policy. And actually you can see it's huge and you do not have to read this. Um, there's basically, there's a, in a nutshell summary at the top, which is a one sentence, don't edit Wikipedia in your own interests. Um, you can edit to affect your interests and hobbies. It's maybe not good wording, but um, in, your, in interest of your own career or your, um, or your employer's interests. But that, so it's possible to get more details about what the conflict of interest rule, what it, that allows and doesn't allow, if you want, but it's mostly kind of common sense. Um, and there is no reason, is there not, Martin, to cite your own research, for example, as long as it adds to the encyclopedia? I mean, is that something for people to be aware of? Yeah, so long as you cite it with other stuff. Yeah. So you so see... you're cynically citing your own research exclusively, that might be... Exactly. So you see people coming in and uh, it, it's a bit sad. You see they, they go and paste the same. They've just had a paper accepted and they put, put that paper into a load of articles as a citation, even that it's, uh, it's tangentially related to. Um, and of course, that will get pushback and, and a lot of pushback and maybe people delete all of the citations. If you focus on a topic and put, put in a range of citations by different authors on the side, but that could include you if you if you're a published expert in that area um that that will be much more accepted uh, it's 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 that wikipedia is under siege and there's a bit of a siege mentality and so some administrators are on a, a hair trigger for stuff that looks spammy mm -hmm. so we've got to be really cautious but as you've shown yourself even if you are initially interpreted as a spammer you can engage with the person who's made that decision, explain what you're doing, and get your edits accepted. No, as I say, it's something that um, I still have a bit of concern about, but inevitably the research that I come across as a non-expert is from the University of Leeds, because that's where I work. Um, and I will cite it, you know, as in good faith um, on articles that it seems to add to, so. Yeah. A principle as we've got to assume good faith of each other. So I, I've said that if you're if you are reverted by somebody, don't assume that they don't want the they don't want encyclopedia to be good, or don't assume hostility. Assume that they are working to improve the encyclopedia and engage in those terms. But that's got to apply to you as well, especially to a, a new user. You've got to um, assume unless you do something really bad, unless you vandalize something, assume you are here to improve the encyclopedia. That's a principle on which the community is supposed to work and mostly does work. Um, uh, yeah, some, new, some newcomers get bitten and get a nasty, frosty reception. Um, but so it's been why I've been at pains earlier on to spell out how you interact with the community. You interact respectfully yourself and other people are kind of uh, snotty with you. This is all taking place in public. This The discussion on these talk pages or user pages whatever, is public, can be seen by all the other users. So if you're being reasonable and other people are being unreasonable to you, third parties like me will see that and will come into this discussion and saying, Nick is being reasonable. This other person isn't. Let's go with what Nick says. Um, so you can always expand the discussion. It's never just you against someone else. You can always bring in a wider community of Wikipedians uh, to get a third perspective if you're deadlocked. And again, these deadlocks are very rare and most edits, most improvements people try to make to Wikipedia get accepted if they're improvements. I'm just psychologically preparing you for that rare possibility that you encounter resistance. But actually, I, at this point, I think I should kind of shut up and let people find, make, make test edits and find an article that you could possibly improve. And I've mentioned a way to, to find 
articles in need of improvement, I do category, this is another kind of behind the scenes aspect of Wikipedia, category and then a colon, and then my subject, space stubs. And so it doesn't have to be biology, just put a, a topic there. And this gives me this tree of articles that are the lowest state, the lowest quality level in Wikipedia, um, of which there are hundreds and which they're classified. So these are going to be really short articles, but they're the articles that definitely exist. So there's probably not a debate about whether these things should exist or be deleted. The articles have been accepted, but there's very little to them. And oh, this is a bit beyond the stub. Sometimes the quality rating can lag behind the development of the article. I'd say this is better than the stub. Let's see, find an actual stub. Uh, okay, this is less than a screen full of text. Um, and the problems with this have been tagged um, uh, very visible. Even, don't we even need the tag. We can look through this and say there's hardly any referencing. Uh, this looks kind of accessible. There's lots of wiki links. If there weren't wiki links, if there were kind of technical terms but didn't have wiki links, we'd want to go in and make sure like carbon flux or carbon cycle linked to the relevant Wikipedia article. Um, so this one needs referencing and maybe further explanation of how this phenomenon is measured and yeah, more citations to proper scientific literature. Um, so the rest of the time, I'm going to hang around until noon mm. and be able to answer questions. And if oh. people want me to go over a specific thing again, I'm very happy to. But what I recommend is you make test edits. And if you're comfortable with the editing interface, find a stub. Find 